Comparison is the thief of joy. That's a quote. So how do you compare? You see what I did there? I said it's the thief of joy, which makes it bad. And I asked you how you compare. Cheeky, wasn't it? A president, Theodore Roosevelt, said that, that comparison is the thief of joy. And what he meant, of course, is that comparing yourself to people who are doing better than you makes you feel shit. That's my interpretation anyway. And that's what we tend to do, isn't it? I do it, certainly, right? And probably you do it too. Now, partly, marketing is to blame, right? The internet is full of assholes like me, talking about how well we've done, so you should buy our thing, or talking about how well our customers have done, so you should buy our thing. And it's deliberate, of course, right? It's meant to make you want what they've got and buy our thing, marketing. But it can make you compare yourself to people who are doing better than you, and that can bring you down. We don't want that. No, we don't, right? We don't want it because who wants that? but also because comparison is not necessarily accurate or reasonable. And while we're here, I do this too, right? I look at other business coaches who are doing better than me and I feel a bit bad. I sometimes think, what am I doing? What am I missing? Or what am I not doing, more accurately? But the reality is, lots of things could be going on, right? A trader who's more successful than you could be, well, hang on a minute. First, what's more successful? Maybe you look at someone who has a nicer car or a bigger house than you, and you think, how come? Or someone whose business is bigger, maybe they've got more vehicles on the road or a bigger team. These are our markers of success, aren't they? The ones we can see, they are visible public markers of success. But people acquire their toys and their nice badges of success, maybe by borrowing money. And other people don't do that, don't borrow money. So those markers of success aren't necessarily reliable indicators that someone's doing well. They may have acquired all that stuff because they've borrowed lots of money and they might spend every night shitting themselves about how they're going to pay the payments. Okay, so appearances can be deceptive and our natural assumptions about how well someone's doing don't always hold, so watch out for that. There are a number of things that do affect business success, right? I'm going to run through them quickly. Doing the right things, right? Of course, the thing we worry we're not doing properly. You know, we might not be doing enough of the right things, which is why we're less successful than someone else who looks like they're more successful. But another one is money. Having more money to start with and more money on the way makes a big difference too. Right? How much or how hard someone's working is another thing. Time in the game is another one and, and where someone started is another thing. I'm going to explain myself. I'll expand on them. Okay, I'll start with the money. I just spoke about how people can look like they have more by borrowing, for example. But people could also start off with more in the first place. Maybe they had more behind them all the way along. I'll give you an example. Right, The trader who's running a business with no other income sources and no capital in the bank, and maybe supporting a family on just the one income, it's probably going to grow a business much more slowly than somebody whose mum and dad were able to buy them a house or lend them 100,000 to get started, or whose partner earns 200K and a good job. I'm not saying these people cheated or anything, but they certainly had a head start over the guy who had nothing behind him, no cash behind him, okay? But certainly, you don't know what kind of advantages somebody who's doing better than you had when it comes to cash what kind of head start they might have had. You shouldn't feel bad that they're doing better than you. Time in the game, that's another thing. And where you started, they're a bit similar. Right? Although we're often confronted by apparent overnight successes, most businesses follow a similar path of growth. And time in the game is a very powerful contributor to a business's success. If you started out on your own and someone else started their business five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, and they had a significant head start on you, didn't they? Right? And your comparisons are a bit flawed. They've had all that time to build word of mouth and presence and cash reserves. Other people have inherited businesses and continued them. And others have bought businesses with money, right? They've bought businesses with an established presence and momentum already, right? Maybe with money they've borrowed and they have to pay back. Maybe with money they saved up. Maybe with money from mum and dad. Or maybe from dealing drugs. Who knows? But that's the thing as well. And you might be comparing yourself to somebody who had a head start from buying a business or something. Now, it's possible somebody works harder than you do, and that's why they're successful, or partly. There are two things to say here. Working harder only goes so far. You can work as hard as two people and make more money, but you'll hit a ceiling and you'll get stuck and you'll still be working hard as well. And also, who wants to work really hard all the time and miss out on life, with your kids, with your relationship, with your friends? If someone more, is more successful than you because they've chosen to work harder than you're prepared to work or longer hours, then you're preparing to work and you've made different choices. Maybe you've made the right choice and that's a kind of a, a limitation. But remembering that hard work is not the only answer. Doing the right things is important too. We're all afraid we're failing at that, aren't we? It's possible other people are doing things you don't know how to do or don't know to do. And they do know. Of course it is. Right? And I think 
We all worry about that. And of course, the answer is to go and learn stuff. Stop churning through work. And go and learn what you should be doing. Go and ask those successful guys what they're doing, seeing if they're doing anything different to you. You know, you might find they reassure you by telling you they've been doing it 20 years and it's, you know, they only know what you know. Buy a business book. Fuck it, buy my thing, right? Buy my business coaching. Of course, I'm heading there. I'll tell you all the things you should be doing. I'm sure the thing, there are things I don't know. Of course, there are. But I've got a framework. It will take you a long way. Book a call. That's how that works. And next time you're comparing and feeling like you're not doing so well by comparison, remember those more successful people might have had advantages you didn't have. So stop comparing and run your own race. See ya.